Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Attic. Last week, you may recall, we addressed speculation about the sudden disappearance of my copy of The Thornbirds, the 1977 Australian romance novel that inspired the hit 1983 miniseries starring a frequently shirtless Richard Chamberlain in 1983. Turns out that was the exact right amount of chest hair for a leading man. Chamberlain never would have survived in these hairless times we're living in where our sex symbols are all Chris's with chests smooth enough to eat off. Anyway, the point is, I left the window open overnight to get rid of the wasps, but then the thorn birds flew out, we think, because it's mating season. But as you can see, Thorny is back, and maybe with child? Impossible to tell. Meanwhile, the president is pregnant with rage. That's a segue. A bad one, but technically still a segue, and decided to give up in the fight against coronavirus in order to reopen the economy. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. You would think that putting aside his venality, his narcissism, and his deadly incompetence, Donald Trump could, at the very least, muster a little empathy for the victims of this pandemic, their loved ones, and the millions who have put themselves in harm's way, lost jobs, or made tremendous personal sacrifices during this crisis. But of course, he can't do that because he's incapable of empathy. He only has two emotions, boredom and rage. He's either staring off into the distance while someone talks about complex policy details or hissing at reporters like a snake whose nest was just disturbed. In fact, just listen to the cold, detached way in which Trump talked about allowing Americans to die in order to reopen the economy and the 30 million people who have lost jobs because of his handling of this crisis during an interview on ABC yesterday. Do you believe that's the reality we're facing, that, that lives will be lost to reopen the country? It's possible there will be some because you won't be locked into an apartment or a, or a house or whatever it is. There are 30 million Americans who are unemployed. You don't need me to tell you that. We're expecting the new unemployment rate this week. There have been forecasts, 15, 16, 17 percent. One of your advisors projected an unemployment rate of 19 percent. That's nearly one in five Americans without a job. How bad is this going to get? Well, that is what it is. Wow. What soaring words. It reminds me of Martin Luther King's, I slept pretty good last night speech, or FDR's famous response when they told him about Pearl Harbor. Well, happens. Usually when someone is that soulless and dead-eyed, you're not asking them questions about the economy, you're holding up a Rorschach test. And what is this, Donald? It is what it is. Very, very interesting. Okay, guards, you can put him back in his restraints now. Oh, I don't think the guards can hear you. Donald, what have you done? Yesterday, Trump also made his first major trip in months to tour a Honeywell factory in Arizona, a trip that gave us what may end up as one of the enduring images of this crisis. Trump toured a mask factory as his White House signaled they were basically just giving up on suppressing the coronavirus pandemic to focus on reopening the economy instead. And as he was doing that, someone chose to blast live and let die on the speakers. Material traps the particulates. Wow. Welcome to the resistance, Honeywell factory floor DJ? Doesn't get much more in the nose than that. What were the other songs on that playlist? You can hear all those classic hits and more on Now That's What I Call Symbolism. Live and Let Die playing while Trump tours a mask factory during a pandemic is the surest sign yet that we're living in a video game. And if we are in a video game, does anyone have the cheat code to get rid of wasps? Because I tried up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start, and that just made them angrier. Anyway, sure enough, during that same trip, Trump brushed off the growing death toll and said he was eager to force Americans back to work prematurely, telling them to think of themselves as participants in an armed conflict. And you see what's going on. They have to open. And... The people of our country should think of themselves as warriors. Our country has to open. I'm viewing our great citizens of this country to a certain extent and to a large extent as warriors. They're warriors. We can't keep our country closed. We have to open our country. The people of our country are warriors, and I'm looking at it. I'm not saying anything is perfect. And yes, will some people be affected? Yes. Will some people be affected badly? Yes. But we have to get our country open, and we have to get it open soon. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. The people of our country are warriors. That's right. Trump wants you, you to be a warrior while he sits safely in isolation in the White House. I would join in, but I feel another bone spur coming on, which is devastating me, because the last one happened right before 
the Vietnam War. I mean, what are the chances that it happens again now? I mean, this is truly sadistic. The president is telling you to go out and face off against a deadly virus all for the sake of the stock market. The only way that could be more out of touch is if he said it while dousing himself in Purell and holding a 36 pack of toilet paper. Every day, it seems we pass a grim new milestone in the coronavirus pandemic with more than 70,000 Americans now dead and at least 30 million out of work, which according to Trump means it's the perfect time to stand down and wrap things up. We can't keep our country closed for the next five years. You know, you could say there might be a recurrence and there, there might be. And, the, you know, most doctors or some doctors say that it, it will happen and it'll be a flame and we're going to put the flame out. We've learned a lot. You know, we've learned a lot about the coronavirus. First of all, who's we? You haven't learned anything. Whenever the doctors are up there talking, you do that thing where you zone out and sway back and forth like a drunk guy who's trying to pretend he's sober. And then you get back up to the podium having only heard like three words and try to sound like you know what's going on. So what I'm hearing is what I grasped when the scientists were talking is that uh, powerful lights will cure coronavirus and give you superpowers. You know, I saw that in a documentary once. Only doubt turns you green. That's the downside side effect. So still, still pretty promising news. You are incapable of learning. You showed up to the CDC in Atlanta surrounded by some of the best doctors in the world and all you did was hold up a printout of a virus like a kid who forgot to do his science project until the last minute. As you can see here, the uh, virus is called uh, Wikipedia. Side effects include uh, further reading and external links. Although actually I will give Trump credit. In the span of two months, he did at least learn one thing, the name of the virus. So you can't put them down in the uh in the category of the overall population in terms of this uh, corona flu. Yes, corona flu. Remember when a deadly virus was racing across the globe and the president was getting intelligence reports about it and he got the name wrong like the worst member of your bar trivia team? This English rock band is led by frontman Mick Jagger. Oh, I know, it's the Rolling Scones. Rolling, of course, in America they're called the Rolling Muffins. That's an extra piece of trivia. Second, no one, and I mean no one, wants to keep the country closed for five years. It hasn't even been closed for five months and we're already losing our minds. I spent six hours a day washing my hands. I wiped down every package like it's coated in anthrax. I've watched so much Netflix that my homepage says, we have nothing left for you. Try Hulu? And I've inhaled so much Lysol, my urine smells like lemon zest. No one... No one wants to live like this. In fact, we didn't have to. Lots of other major developed countries have successfully suppressed their outbreaks by acting early, testing aggressively, and implementing a system of isolating cases and tracing their contacts. Some never even had to fully lock down, and others have already reopened, like in South Korea, where they had their first case on the exact same day we had ours. And while here in the U.S., almost every day, at least 25,000 new coronavirus cases are identified. In South Korea, the rate of new confirmed cases of coronavirus has slowed down dramatically in recent weeks to less than 10 a day. Of course, if you pointed that out to Trump, he probably wouldn't accept it. It's not a fair compare. Uh, South Korea is 13 hours ahead, so they had to jump on it. In fact, while we're all stuck in our homes watching reruns of Blue Bloods at 2 in the afternoon, Korean baseball is already back playing games just without fans. In fact, ESPN is now airing them here in the U.S., which has introduced us to some truly incredible team names like the NC Dinos and the SK Wyverns, which are mythical winged two-legged dragons with barbed tails. Last year, they even used augmented reality to have a dragon fly into the stadium and breathe fire. Our baseball teams need... More mascots like that. The only mythical creature we have is, I don't know, is it like an aardvark? Like a, like a hairy aardvark who loves baseball? Hmm. We've been highlighting success stories like that from South Korea to Iceland to New Zealand to Taiwan because they're out there. There are lots of countries with competent governments that manage to suppress the outbreak and allow their societies to safely return to some semblance of normalcy. Trump has repeatedly lied and claimed that, as he put it, the cupboards were bare when he took office three years ago, and that's why he's failed to fight the virus. But in a new ABC interview, Trump was asked why he didn't do anything to fix the situation. You're three years into your first term. Yeah. You're now applying for the job again. What did you do when you became president to restock those cupboards that you say were bare? Well, I'll be honest, uh, I have a lot of things going on. No, you don't. All you do is watch TV and whenever your aides let you out of your straitjacket, tweet. And when you're not golfing, you're tweeting about golfing. like. On Sunday, when you retweeted a post from your golf course in Scotland claiming they'd been named best golf course in the UK and Ireland by a European golf magazine, so nice to see this great honor. Thank you, but haven't played golf in a long time. 
First of all, that's not true. You played golf in March with members of the Washington Nationals. Damn it, Nationals! You were supposed to be the feel-good team everyone could be happy with over the cheating Astros. Now, I mean, who are we supposed to root for when baseball comes back? The Mets? I mean, they're the only team that's doing better during quarantine. Pretty sure the last president they met with was William Henry Harrison, and then he died 10 days later. That was the year Mr. Met caught typhoid. And now, instead of taking any responsibility for the situation, Trump and his toadies on state TV are whining that he hasn't gotten enough credit for only letting 70,000 Americans die and 30 million lose their jobs, like human beer keg Jesse Waters on Fox News this week. Can you imagine, Greg, the media, how they'd sound if Barack Obama were president during the pandemic? It goes something like this. Barack Obama putting politics aside and sacrificing the key to a successful re-election. Shut down the economy just in order to save lives. That's what it would sound like. Now, I know the president's not going to get great coverage like that, but the president just wants fair coverage because he never got credit for winning the election. They said Russia cheated. He never got credit for the economy. They said it was Barack Obama's. And he's not getting credit for anything, for ventilators, for flattening the curve. My God, you sound like the whiniest pledge in Sigma Chi. The dean is shutting down our blackface party, completely ignoring the fact it was a fundraiser to help local cocaine dealers. The U.S. is the richest and most powerful country on Earth, and yet we're also the epicenter of a deadly outbreak that has been suppressed in lots of other countries. And now the president wants to send you to war against the virus for the sake of the stock market, but at least when he does send you to war, he'll do so with this soaring battle cry. That is what it is. This has been A Closer Look. Since this crisis started, we've been asking people to help City Harvest, so please continue to give. More and more New Yorkers are turning to them to keep food on their tables. If you're watching this online, please hit the donate button, stay safe, wash your hands. We love you.